this is seated word seed of word in ministry and i am ometa happy today. <laughs> Amen. Because I gave him my old filthy garment and he gave me one, a robe of pure white. I want to talk today about unhinged morality. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just give you praise and glory and honor. We thank you that there is no one like you. You are faithful and just and kind towards your people. And we give you praise. You are faithful and just and kind to all creation. Amen. And you take a step further when we have accepted you and became your son or your daughter. God, we give you praise and glory and honor. We thank you, Lord God, for the rising of the sun to the going down of the same that your name has not changed in a world where things are changing drastically lord god we thank you that we find you the same we lift up those who are going through COVID, that are going through copd that are having heart attacks and heart failures we remember that jesus had talked about some of these things going on we pray that hearts will not fail and hope would rise and faith would stand strong in these days and times. We give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Unhinged morality. Unhinged means to be highly disturbed, distraught, unstable, unbalanced. You know how we see that when the door is off the hinges. <laughs> it's just hanging off the hinges. Morality is the distinction between what is good and what is bad, or what is right and what is wrong. It appears that our nation, our world, is hanging on a hinge, and we are unhinged morality as we look around. If we take a look around us or listen to the news, we can see the manifestation of unhinged morale behavior. In 2 Timothy, he, the words are written, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. But men shall be lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, fake, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, 
heady-minded, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. We can see these things going on around us. We have to give God praise for revealing to us what was coming and now is so we can check ourselves and repent. Blessed is the man who knows his own transgressions. As we go over that list, we can make a list. God is awesome because he gives us the opportunity to get right before he makes his return. It will be awful to fall into the hands of an angry God. We as the body of Christ can ask for forgiveness and teach others. God is not mocked. Amen. In Galatians 6, it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore the opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. God desires all to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. As we look around at the shootings and the murders, you can see that people are not caring about other people. As we see them robbing old people in broad daylight, shooting in uh, people in broad daylight, you can see morality is hinged, unhinged, unstable. These people are disturbed. They are not seeking after God. Even though God in Exodus 10 was saying our cattle also shall go with us, there shall not an hoof be left behind. I smile every time I read that. I know that God was talking about the animals so that they could take them out of Egypt to worship when they got to the place God was taking them. But God desires none of us to be left. And if we have to look at that as a hoof, then we need to see that not a hoof will be left. For we are his worship. This is cleanup time. And we need to take it seriously. Some of us have thought we got time. Some of us feel like we just have time to wait. We can wait until such and such time, until, but God is showing us the signs that we need to get ready. Several years ago, a young man was brought to, to my office in church for addiction. He accepted Jesus Christ and, gave, and I gave him a welcome bag full of spices. We called it Spice Up with Essex. And I put in there, spices, candy, literature, and a Bible. After we had spoke about what he was in <clears throat> the addiction, he expressed his excitement about the bag and said that he was going home and make something for his boys. He was not with his children, they were with someone else, but his uh, ex. And so, the children were going to be brought to him and he was excited that he had accepted Jesus Christ and he wanted to do something new with his baby boys. That following Thursday, he was supposed to come to a group meeting. But on the Wednesday before the Thursday, I preached his funeral. I'm sharing that to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, to read 2 Timothy, look around, and then look in the mirror, and then make your list to present to our God who will not be mocked. There was a man who was found in the Bible who felt the same way, but he too 
was unhinged morality. He thought of himself only in Luke chapter 12. And it spake, Jesus spake a parable unto them saying, the ground of a rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast made much goods lay up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose, who shall those things be which thou hast provided? You see, we don't know when the time will come. We have spoken to people, and then a, a couple days later, they don't even have their right mind. So while we have this opportunity, wake up, my brothers and sisters. God is a good, good God. He sent Jesus to give us salvation and the keys to eternal life. But he told us to work out our own soul salvation. Jesus told his disciples, I'm going away, but I'm coming back again, and I will receive you unto myself. Can you see his time coming? Is Timothy loud and clear about what's going on around us? There's a song that expresses, I gave him my old filthy garment, and he gave me one, a robe of pure white. In the song, it seems like it's a one-time thing, but I don't think so. For every day, I'm encountered with something I need to drop off or pray about and then relinquish through, thanks through thanksgiving and repentance. Every day I hear or see something I need to be cleaned from. I believe we are living in the last days. And that God is calling us unto him through his word and through the prophecies to get ourselves together. Give him your old filthy garment and you too can sing, that's why I'm happy. That is why I'm happy. That is why I'm happy. Joy, joy down in my soul since Jesus made everything right. And my old filthy garment, and he gave me a robe of pure white. And now I'm feasting on manna from heaven. That is why I'm happy tonight. That is why I'm happy. That is why I'm happy. That is why I'm happy tonight. Joy, joy down in my soul. Just made everything right. Gave him my old filthy garment. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. That is why I'm happy tonight. Amen. You can be happy this morning and tonight. Take a look at that list. It's filthy. And take it and give it to God, asking him to create in you a clean heart and a right spirit. If you've already done it, Give him praise that he is able to do abundantly above all that you could think or ask for. He is God, and beside him <laughs> there is no other. He loves you, and I love you. Stay distancing. COVID doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Hang in there. 
have hope that Jesus is coming to receive his bride, the body of Christ, unto himself. Isn't that a wonderful thing to think about? Give him that old filthy garment. Give him them fi filthy cigarettes. Give him that filthy dope. Give him that filthy pornography. Give him those things that draw you away from the presence of God. Give it to him. And watch don't he give you righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. He'll give you that robe that is covered and it's pure white. Amen. We may not be able to see that robe, but I believe that when we give him that which is not of him, he replaces it with something of himself. I gave him my old filthy garment. And every day I'm giving him more and more that I see in my life that is contrasted to his word. And you can too. Amen. Be encouraged. Stay masking. Stay distancing. Wear gloves when necessary. Ask God about whether you should get the shot or not. And I always say, work out your own soul salvation with trembling and fear before your mighty God. Amen. Amen. Give God praise for the joy that he can give you. Now I want to talk to you about the gift card. Amen. I have gift cards to send to those who have answered the quiz question. We're starting out a new week. Amen. And there's a gift card for this week. The quiz question is, let me think of a good one. <laughs> what was the name that God gave Jacob? What is the name that God gave Jacob? He said, you will no longer be known as Jacob, but you shall be named Jacob. Give me a call, text me, put it in the message. The message has time hooked to it so I know who did first. It is to the first caller. What is the name that God gave Jacob? Amen. God bless you. See you on Thursday. Amen.